All right, as we're packing, I'm really coming to a dilemma. Um, I think I'm gonna let y'all decide which hat I'm, I need to wear to the hoot nanny, and which I should wear, because it really is a hard decision. So, um, you look at them and see, can you comment let me know. All right, should I wear this one, that one, or that one? It's a hard decision. Kind of awesome. She's just laying there and letting me pet her. Come on, girl, let's go milk milk this morning. You ready? You ready? Let's go. Come on. Yep. Yep. Everybody needs a milk cow like Elsa. Come on, girl. Cal learns its commands where she knows where she's going. All right. We have power this morning. We have power. And Elsa gets to stay in her grass after she milks. This tall grass that's deep. This is the paddock she'll be in when we go to the hooting in. So I'm going to go and let her get in it because it's so tall. I got grass that's starting to seed. Look at this. See that grass. All right, here's my... It's past my knee. It's up here on my thigh. All this grass. Look at it on her. She's my tallest... Yeah, look, it's it's way under her belly. So, it's doing good. Put a move hike over. Just got done milking. Big thick grass, good Bermuda grass. So, she's excited, and then more than that, we're excited because we have power. But Elsa's doing great. We've got a farm setter that actually come in today, and uh, we're hoping that. Everything goes smoothly. That way we enjoy our trip and won't have to worry about our cow and our animals and our other cows. And so, uh, we'll, we shall soon see. After milk, we had to go in, got breakfast done for the kids and uh, just checked on the baby and mommy. And It's amazing how since, since breakfast, she has not even stopped eating since she's been in this fresh grass. So, um, the more a cow eats, the more they produce in milk. So I tell you, tomorrow, where we've been getting about 1.5 to 1.7, I imagine we're going to be hitting close to 1.8, 1.9, 2 gallons tomorrow. So she has not stopped eating since she got in here. What's so funny is our bull calf over there, Ike, he loves being with her. But what is so funny is because the gate is way down there, he can't figure out how to cross over. <laughs> and the gate's open. So I'm going to let him just stay over there and finish up that little paddock. Um, it really could have had another day in there, but to be honest with you, this started seeding and getting too tall, uh, laying over actually. So we wanted to go ahead and get Elsa and Ike in here, but we'll let Elsa just stay in here and let Ike over there finish up that paddock, move him over here, and uh, hey, go ahead and start in this field. Uh, it's exciting because like I said, I know we're going to... Michigan we're gonna start loading up the RV anyway and getting it ready so uh, just a lot to a lot to get done before we go but uh, man she's she's absolutely loving this she's gonna have so much milk over the next few days it's gonna be crazy what? talk about all the stuff you're doing uh, I'm feeding my starter so that I can make cinnamon rolls for us and cinnamon rolls for the hoot nanny. And I'm taking some poppy seed chicken for us. So I'm just cooking a few things in advance. Um, ow, she just broke the counter again. Um, I'm just cooking some things for us to take so that we don't have to spend as much time in the kitchen. There are some things that we're gonna do like grill and stuff like that, but for some of the meals, we're just going to have ready. Um, 
and I don't want to spend all my time there cooking. So I'm cooking in advance and we're going to put some stuff in the refrigerator and some stuff in the freezer. So that's what I'm doing now. Well, uh, it has rained us out. Uh, it's sunny now. I mean, I'm telling you, I think the last two vlogs, y'all seen it go from rainy to wet to rainy to wet. So then I'm, I'm soaking wet and I'm talking about how cloudy it is and it rains and then the next image, it's sunny. Uh, welcome to Mississippi. So right now we just got soaked. I actually had a change because it got that crazy. I did not get the uh, Corral finished. I'm going to try to get it finished. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do it today because it's wet back there now. So I've, I do got to move the cows over. We're, right now we're in hoot nanny mode. Uh, as you saw, Misty was cooking. Um, we finished milking earlier, but now we're going to try to do all we can before uh, we head out of here. Um, it's a long journey for us. So uh, we, we got a pad built for the, 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 the RV when we get back, so it's not sitting on dirt. So that's a good thing. Uh, it's right by the bees, so you really got to want to steal our RV or you're going to get tore up. So, <laughs> But it is doing good. But um, we've got the RV mostly packed. We'll kind of finish up uh, packing it probably either tonight or first thing in the morning before we leave. But uh, it's always fun. Now, you probably won't see this video until we're actually um, on our way or up there. Or, or like I said, um, we're doing the max at 8. It might even come out before this video. So I don't know. So we're trying to get everything done. Uh, before we go, uh, Misty's been cooking like crazy, and because again, the less we have to cook up there, the better. Uh, we are going to try to see uh, a, a family member of mine in Arkansas as we go. Uh, we are going to try to go to uh, Kentucky to the Ark encounter, take the kids by. I think that'd be great. Uh, and then we're going to go to Port Huron and see in my gardener store. So there's a lot of things we're trying to pack into this this trip because, as you see, Elsa, we have a farm sitter. So when you have a farm sitter. Uh, we try to pack as much as we can. So she's doing great by the way. She's she's that grass has made her uh, <laughs> Produce a lot of milk. So we've got a good bit of milk heading out. We're gonna make some butter uh, before we go We're also going to eat some ice cream with this milk as we get in Michigan. So we're excited about that What's so crazy is about 90 something here. Uh, we were talking to a fella from um, From Michigan and it was like the 90s up there So I thought we were gonna leave for cooler temperatures, but it looks like we're gonna get the same so uh, anyways, let's go finish our chores. We're gonna try to knock out what we can. I'm having to take the ranger because where we're going is kind of muddy. I'm gonna go ahead and move the cows for the last time before we actually go. Uh, like I said, I, I didn't want to move them, but I do not want them in temporary fencing while we have a farm center. So we're gonna go do that right quick. Uh, you'll get to see them again, and then uh, we're gonna check on our cucumbers. Uh, we may go ahead and ride over and see our pumpkins real quick uh, before the, the if there's rain coming again. I don't know. It looks sunny right now, but last time I did that, I got stormed and. And you don't know, I might can get to the crowd again today. So uh, let's go on and go over there. I want you to understand the reason I like showing grass is because true cattle, pig, chicken, whatever farms, if you don't have grass, you don't have sustainability for your animals. So as you see, this stuff is so high. And I, I don't know if you can tell how high it is on camera. I don't know if it does it justice. But if you can't grow grass, it's hard to have animals and it be sustainable because even though I, I treat my cows with some hay, I treat my cows with some feed, ultimately without this right here, it is not sustainable. So, um, you know, we're going to move them in this. And actually, this has another week to grow. But like I said in a prior vlog, if I don't go and get this done and move them over here during this, uh, you know, this wet season, and then also with the, the fact that there's storms while well, we're in Michigan, a farm center, I don't want a tree fall on that temporary wire. I don't want anything happening to it or causing issues and all of a sudden I got cows out and I'm trying to round up people to come get my cows when I'm in Michigan. So you see this grass is just so thick. I mean, I'm just stepping in it and it's all well over my boot. So we're gonna go ahead and put them in it. Again, we try to have grass fed cows period, especially these. So, uh, you know, it's very important. So uh, again, I know I show a lot of grass and I know people think we're crazy, but um, this is all grass that was not planted uh, this grass has been here, but what's so great about it is we don't fertilize it uh, We let them fertilize it. We do intense grazing and we don't put any chemicals on it The only thing I did this year on this grass was I limed it and that was just to balance my pH out So well, you see this is the paddock They've still got two weeks or three weeks to go to and it's already almost as high as this paddock So we're gonna let them just kind of graze in both paddocks tonight First thing in the morning before we leave, we'll put them in this permanent fencing. 
and uh, off to Michigan we go in that beauty. <laughs> so if you see that, honk at us, wave at us, and uh, give us a howdy, y'all. What's cool is I've set our paddocks up to where now I don't actually have to take any paddock fencing down, temporary fencing down. And what's even cooler is the way I've got it ran with my Patriot Solar Guard. Um, I can light up one piece of it and it lights up all of it. All these different paddocks all through here. Look at this, how good our cows are doing. Look, smart cows. I hope I say I'm a smart farmer. So smart farmer, smart cows. They might be smarter than me, really. But uh, look at them, galloping for fresh grass. They're trying to get to my feed bucket. And Allie has found it. <laughs> All right, let's get them moved. Good girl, good girl. Allie girl. Doesn't she look like the board of milk cow? She, I think she's going to be better than the board of milk cow. This is that Patriot. Again, I'm, I don't, I don't know the Patriot people, and they don't know me. But I do. I will commend this. This is the Patriot Solar Guard 155. It's popped them so hard one time that actually during the the, her, the tropical storm, um, there was a piece of it that fell, and actually they could have got out, but they were so scared to walk around it just because they've been popped by it. So it, it's doing what we want it to do, and not only that, between that and the Great Pyrenees. I mean, we've had no problems. Now, I'm not saying you won't have problems, but if you're looking at temporary fencing, man, go with this wide poly tape because it's a good barrier compared to poly rope or poly wire. Like the wire, the silver wire, galvanized wire, it just doesn't do it. I mean, we've had it, and I'm not saying it doesn't work for all the people that, that say it does. I'm sorry, I don't mean that mean. But the, to me, the poly tape seems so useful. And those little, man, like these little fiberglass rods, these things are awesome. Well, they're easy, they're lightweight. I mean, you're almost gonna pay what you pay for a T-post. However, you can carry them and do a lot with them. So I've got T-posts in some spots, and between that, I've got those little lightweight fiberglass. And what's so cool is this this solar guard. I don't have to move unless I just want to, because they they I mean you know it lights up the whole thing, and they're scared of it. It don't matter. They're not gonna touch it no matter what. So um, they respect it, and that's all about. That's what's so cool about temporary fencing is respect and see they've not even went way down there i mean it's amazing how with our grass and the way we rotate there's parts of this area that we own that still has a chance to have more cows or more grass but there's just not been a reason to go to it because i don't need it right now so instead of abusing that land i'm gonna wait because you never know what could happen we may have sheep or we may invest in more cattle uh, of course these are gonna have some calf so you know if you learn to do it right i think even though I'm not doing it all right, I'm not saying that, and definitely I'm not uh, as awesome as some of you other farmers and homesteaders, but it's amazing how awesome grass, just something so simple that we cut and weed away from our house can sustain so much and feed us. Um, if it be milk and dairy, to butter and cheese, to being true, steaks or hamburgers on the grill. have pieces of all of the house here so right now we're just trying to get it all put away everything from bags of toys to groceries food baby safety so from a scale from one to ten how stressed are you um about a nine and a half if you want me to be honest it's just a lot to try to remember. Um, the kids have kind of been a handful today. So we come home and I was cleaning up a quart of honey that the baby got the top off of and dumped it all over the rug, his work shoes. So just trying to 
work through all of that. Um, but we're almost there. We're leaving in the morning. Uh, so today is Tuesday afternoon. We're leaving Wednesday morning. And so we're kind of in the down to the nitty gritty. Well, I was going to try to end it right quick so we could get inside and get ready to go. But I just couldn't let all this waste. Look at all these tomatoes. This is about three more gallons. So we're up to, man, I can't tell you how many pounds of tomatoes we have. And Misty's been aggressively trying to get uh, spaghetti and tomato sauces and stuff like that made. So uh, even with losing a lot, just being heirloom, you know, um, man, we've got a lot of tomatoes this year. So I just couldn't let them go to waste. So we went on and got those as we were walking back from the cattle field. So uh, I think I'm officially going to call it a day. We hope that you have a good day. Happy Homestead, y'all. Yeah.